Uh, allow me to introduce myself. Does anyone know how much a polar bear weighs? It's about 700 to 1500 pounds for adult males. Just about. As I reflect on my four years at Millbrook, which quite honestly seems much longer than that, I can pinpoint particular memories of different aspects of my life here. As I step back, I see the growth and change I've experienced as a person, mostly for the better, that I partly owe to this institution. Millbrook has truly changed me. I believe that sentence is used a lot when we speak of something being crucial in our growth and our development as people. But when I talk about how much Millbrook has changed me and allowed me to discover who I am, I really do mean it. Choosing to spend four years here was truly the greatest decision, decision I ever made, and I stand by that today. I also think that sentence gets plenty of judgment. Many students in here will say they don't like Millbrook. For some, it's an improper fit, as all things that exist can be. But for others, I think it's superficial. It may be the status quo. In a way, it's a social norm that it's culturally acceptable to have negative feelings towards the school. Those of you who spend your time frustrated with this place, exaggerating its little faults, its imperfections, I ask you to name a school where each of those faults is resolved. I promise you even that school, if it exists, has its own faults that Millbrook doesn't have. I ask you to look up and look around and embrace Millbrook. If you put reputation aside and forget about what people will think if you say, hey, I actually kind of like this place, and start to let it become a core part of your life You'll watch as everything changes for the better. I know this because I, too, did not like Millbrook at first. You can ask my father. I remember vividly my first thoughts that Millbrook may not have been the right fit. I was a third former. We'd gone out to brunch on a Sunday in September. I recall the fall foliage so special around here, which reminded me of visiting Millbrook on Saturdays as a kid. We would drive up after my soccer games at home. Through visiting as a child and through the stories my dad told me when he attended, Millbrook seemed like such a perfect, happy place that I would transition into with ease. But as we were driving down Fraley Hill Road that Sunday headed back to campus, I did not regard Melbrook in the same way. My dad pulled over, looked at me, and asked if I liked Melbrook. I said no. And I looked at him, and I was thinking about how difficult it was socially and how hard it was to transition to living independently. I know I probably cried. I'm an emotional and passionate guy. And he gave me a hug, and he told me that if he didn't think Melbrook was right for me, he'd pull me out. But he said he knew Millbrook was where I was supposed to be and it would all get better, and that changed my mentality entirely. I put faith in him and therefore in the school. I trusted that I was in the right place and that the faculty, staff, and students around me were part of this community and institution that was intended to serve me well. And I believe my father was right and that the change in how I looked at the school, I really didn't like at the time, made all the difference. I mentioned the many of you who I think put on a front of disliking the school. I think you should change your mentality. Look at, look at the community around you and consider that this place is where you are supposed to be. Ignore those little faults and imperfections that you would find at any school across the globe. Embrace Millbrook and find a way in which it serves you and find a way to serve it in return. Because I believe the consistent year-to-year -year trend of acting so negatively towards a school is wearing on the fabric of the culture. And it's not too late to make this change. As Jimmy Page and Robert Plant wrote in Stairway to Heaven, Yes, there are two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. Millbrook is supposed to be a place where, like for my friends and me, one can find their true best selves and experience important growth and development as people. I ask that you at least try to change the road you're on. Something that makes me tick on a day-to-day -day basis at Millbrook over the last few years has been leadership. It's one of those things that's given me a platform to embrace the school. We are surrounded by leadership. As students, we have dorm leaders, peer counselors, prefects, curators, community service heads, team captains, and even more. And this is for this year and next year alike. But the kind of leadership I think is perhaps most important is the quiet leadership. The everyday leaders who inspire others to speak and to act without a title. The reason I think that is because we, as those student leaders, did not have those titles until the end of our fifth form years. We did not just suddenly become leaders then upon being accepted to those positions. We assumed titles then. It was the leadership before then that enabled us to serve these roles. For those of you in this room who will hold leadership roles next year, you've probably demonstrated some of this everyday leadership I'm talking about, and you'll grow even more next year. For those of you who were not selected, and those too young then to apply, you're truly in a great position right now. You have the opportunity to be a quiet leader and to emerge as one for future years, likely with titles to join you somewhere along the way. Tonight I'm gonna to talk about three types of everyday leadership that I find essential to developing as a leader. 
It's something that retrospectively I think allowed me to become a leader. And as I said, serve as an outlet to how I could embrace Millbrook. The first is the ability to lead yourself, the second to lead by example, and the third to be a follower. Thomas J. Watson, the former chairman of IBM, said nothing so conclusively proves a man's ability to lead others as what he does from day to day to lead himself. You are the smallest crowd uh, that you'll ever have to lead. So how you motivate yourself to act will mimic how you'll do the same for others when leading a group. The first step is holding yourself to a higher standard. In leading a group, you'll be entrusted with being responsible for other people. You'll have to hold expectations for them and make them accountable for their own actions. In leading yourself, you must do this for your own. Hold yourself to a high standard and push yourself to succeeding at the level you want to succeed, even if you think you're never gonna get there. Along with that, you need goals. I believe that successful leaders are goal-oriented. They lead with a vision. A perfect example of this is coach Jimmy Valvano, who led the North Carolina State basketball team to winning the national championship in 1983. He once told the story about how each year he held a practice where the players would practice how to celebrate winning the national championship. There were no basketballs, there were no drills. The sole purpose was that the team had a vision that they were committed to. They would put a ladder underneath the basket, they'd go up and cut pieces off, and then he would go up and cut the final piece and they'd hold him and parade him around the court. By then, he had gotten a taste of winning a national championship. He wanted his team to believe they could do it too. He wanted them to be ready to go when it happened, not if, but when. Keeping in mind the standard you will hold yourself to, set challenging goals that will help drive you. Have a vision. Once you set your goals, you need a plan. Author Alan Lakin once said, failing to plan is planning to fail. In order to find success in achieving your goals, you must know how you're gonna get there. Yes, along the way, you're going to be thrown curveballs, and you'll have to make decisions as to how to keep moving, which you can't prepare for. But you need to know what direction you're going to move in once you get back up on your feet. The fourth key to leading yourself is having a purpose. You need to hold yourself to a high standard, set challenging goals based on that standard, and make a plan to fulfill these goals. But it's not worth it if you don't have a purpose for it. Every person has their own raison d'etre, their reason for being. And setting and reaching your goals have a purpose that drives you. Being able to fulfill this purpose and this process to have personal success is leading yourself and you must be able to do that in order to lead others. The second piece in developing as an everyday leader is leading by example. We talk a lot about this and it's one of the most common responses to the question, how do you lead? But its commonality does not decrease its value, it only proves how prevalent and important it is. My first run in with this type of leadership was on the soccer field. As a freshman I was the second string JV goalie. I lacked experience and struggled for playing time and what little I earned often resulted in humiliation as Tommy reminded us of. Sophomore year, I made varsity and it was the same. But I began to realize that what I struggled for was not performance or playing time. What I really wanted was to be a leader and to be respected by my peers. The following year, as a junior and once again the backup goalie, I adopted a new mindset. I no longer thought, I'm not going to play today, but instead I will contribute and succeed even if I don't. This pushed me to a level of discipline and dedication that would bring rewards, rewards on and off the field. That year, I earned the respect of my teammates and coaches by working hard and trying my best to lead by example. I wanted to show younger players that even though I didn't play, I worked hard and I cared a lot. My message to them was that they could do the same. I did not have a leadership title, nor did I have much vocal power on that team, but I wanted to motivate others to hold themselves to the highest standard I began to hold myself to. I led myself, and by doing that, I was actually leading by example, too. To be an effective leader, I believe you also must be a good follower. I read an article over spring break in the New York Times titled, Not Leadership Material? Good, the world needs followers. Just seeing the headline was somewhat eye-opening for me. We talk so much about leadership and how in schools we want to build young leaders to be the front runners of their industries when they grow up. There's so much pressure to be a leader. But what good is a leader if there's no one to lead? What would be the point of motivating others to action if there's no one there to listen and then act? Good followers are essential to society because they nurture good leaders. They do this by being producers who get things done to help the group reach its goals, following that plan I talked about. These followers have a purpose that keeps them driven, just as the leaders do, however different these purposes may be. Followers are also good listeners, hearing out the leader and acting accordingly. And they're good speakers and give the leader feedback as to how he can improve his role in motivating the group. I believe most good leaders are also good followers, and that leaders and followers possess similar attributes and are just as important. There are a lot of leaders in this room some with titles, some without, but they all have one thing in common, which is that somewhere along the way, they were or they will be everyday leaders. Leaders who first learn to lead themselves and motivate themselves, who in doing this set an example for others to do the same and to accomplish their own goals with this self-motivation. 
They acquire leadership skills through followership, followership, and they learn important values, such as being goal-oriented and working hard. They're able to nurture this good leadership and bring out the best in novice leaders and learn something from that so that when they're in the position of leadership, they know a thing or two. For those aspiring leaders in this room, you may seek to do just that. Leadership is an outlet in which I have enabled myself to embrace Millbrook. I didn't know it back then in September of my third form year, where I didn't like this place very much, but I know it now. I know it because somewhere along the way it changed my mentality. Those of you who act negative towards the school, please find an outlet to embrace it. This place is very special and serve you well. In doing this, you'll make the most out of the time you have here. It goes by quickly, so cherish it, because before you know it, you'll be 10 days away from graduating and you'll wonder where the days went. I know this simply from experience. Thank you.